Hello, my name is Joris Kulemans, I'm a PhD student at the VUB in Brussels, and today I will talk about work in progress on shallowly embedding type theories as pre-sheaf models in Agda. Let's start with a little bit of motivation. Suppose that you want to interpret the untyped lambda calculus in type theory. So we've defined uh, an inductive data type of expressions of the untyped lambda calculus with at most n free variables, and we want to interpret these expressions as values of a certain type d, given an environment that provides interpretations for the free variables. Now, if you try to do this, you quickly realize that you want this type d to be equal to the function type from d to d. But unfortunately, there's no such type d uh, that satisfies this equation, and that's also non-trivial. And a possible solution to this, uh, to this problem is using guarded recursion. And guarded recursion provides a new operation on types called the later modality, and it also provides a way to construct a type d that's equal to the function type from later d to later d. And this turns out to be uh, sufficient um, for an interpretation of the untyped lambda calculus in type theory. Now this illustrates that it's interesting and useful to uh, study extensions of standard martin lift type theory, such as, uh, well, a type theory with support for guarded recursion, or cubical type theory, or a type theory with support for reasoning with parametricity, and so on. Now, a recurring problem um, with extensions of type theory is soundness. How do we prove that uh, introducing new uh, operations and new reasoning principles uh, does not lead to uh, a contradiction? And a way to do prove this is by constructing a model of this new type theory. And pre-sheaf models are an important class of models of dependent type theory. Now in this presentation I will talk about a framework or a library that we developed in Agda that allows you to explore extensions of martin Leif type theory by directly manipulating pre-sheaf models. So let's first look at a broad overview of, uh, of our framework. So basically for every judgment uh, in martin Leif type theory there is a corresponding Agda type. So for instance, um, we have a type of uh, an Agda type of contexts. Uh, for now, ignore these uh, C and L parameters. Given a context gamma, we also have an Agda type of types in this context gamma. And given a context gamma and a type T in gamma, we've got uh, an Agda type of terms of type T in context gamma. Furthermore, there is an Agda type of proofs that two uh, types T and S uh, in the same context are equal and an Agda type of proofs that uh, two terms T and S of the same type are equal. Note uh, that uh, these five Agda types are not defined as data types, so we're not um, providing a deep embedding of, uh, of type theory in Agda. Rather, they are record types with certain fields, and I will go into detail um, about the fields of the Agda type of context in a, in a few minutes, but in order to do that, I will first quickly give some background on pre-sheaves. And in order to do that, um, I'm coming back to uh, the setting of guarded recursion. So there you can um, ask the question, how do we represent um, the type of guarded streams of natural numbers? And to do that, we're going to look at uh, a guarded stream of natural numbers as a discrete signal of natural numbers. And at each time step, we're going to um, we're going to collect um, everything that has been received up until that point. So, for instance, at uh, after one time step, we've received only one natural number, and so this will be represented as a factor of length one. After a second time step, we've received another natural number that we append to this factor, so we get a factor of length 2, and so on and so on. And so a guarded stream of natural numbers can be represented as a sequence of vectors of increasing length, such that the vector of length n plus 1, uh, if we drop the last element from that, we get the vector of length n. And so a type, uh, the, the, the type of guarded streams of natural numbers can be represented by this sequence of types, uh, these are Agda types, um, together with uh, maps from vectors of length n plus 1 to vectors of length n for any n that just drop the last element from a vector. And so more generally, uh, any closed type x in our object theory will be represented as um, a sequence of Agda types x0, x1, etc., 
together with um, maps from xn plus 1 to xn for any n. Um, uh, well, yeah. And so given, uh, uh, well, and so uh, given such a closed type x in our object theory, a term of this uh, type in the object theory can be represented as giving a value uh, for each of these actor types such that uh, the value provided uh, for xn is equal to this map applied to the variable uh, to value uh, provided for xn plus 1. And so using this representation, it's uh, easy to define a later modality on types, because what can we do? We can just shift everything one uh, to the by one to the right and add a unit type in front. And so taking into account that uh, the type of guarded streams can be interpreted as um, discrete signals, we really see uh, where the name later modality comes from, because uh, there you then just um, postpone everything uh, by one time step, uh, one time step, yeah. Okay, so that's the interpretation or the representation uh, of, a, of a closed type. Um, the next question is how can we represent uh, a context? And there we just note that a context is actually just a list of types, and so they will be represented in exactly the same way. Now before we can go to the Agda code um, for contexts, um, I first need to reformulate this a little bit. So giving a, a sequence of types together with these maps is actually equivalent to giving a sequence of types together with um, a map from xl to xk for any um, k that's less than or equal to l, provided that going from xn to xn uh, is just the identity function and provided that everything here commutes. So for instance, that going from xn to x1 and then going um, to x0 is exactly the same as going from x, uh, directly from xn to x0. And this kind of structure is called a pre-sheaf, or more concretely, a pre-sheaf on the base category omega of uh, natural numbers with the standard order, st standard order structure. Um, and so, like in any pre-sheaf model, a context in our framework will internally be represented as such a pre-sheaf. Now, these pre-sheaves, or this base category, are useful when working with guarded recursion. But, uh, of course, we want to study other extensions of type theory, and then we also want to consider diagrams uh, like this, but of another shape. And so, in general, our framework will be parameterized by a small base category C um, that determines the, the, the shape of this diagram. Okay, and so now we can turn to um, to, to some Agda code. So uh, the question is, what uh, actually is uh, this type, uh, this Agda type of context? So we see that this Agda type of context is parameterized by a base category C, a small category, and also by some uh, L, which has to do with uh, the universe levels in Agda, which, which will not be important um, anymore in this talk. So um, what fields does this uh, record has, have? Well, first of all, um, for each object of our category, we should provide an Agda type. So for in our example above, uh, for each natural number, we get an Agda type. Secondly, for any morphism in our category from an object X to an object Y, or in our example above, from any uh, inequality between natural numbers, we get a map between two of these types. Note here that these braces are uh, Agda syntax for implicit arguments. And then the next two fields are um, are some laws that need to be satisfied. Um, so the first uh, law is that um, the the map corresponding to the identity morphism going from uh, an object X to itself should be uh, mapped to an identity function between these two set, uh, two, between these two Agda types. And uh, the second law is that um, um, the composition of morphisms um, should be mapped to composition of active functions. And so this is uh, the definition of um, the Agda type of contexts in our framework. Um, and in a very similar way, we can define uh, the Agda type of types in a certain context gamma. And then you can also make precise the intuitive explanation from some slides ago to define the Agda type of terms of a certain type T in a certain context gamma. Okay. Um, so... Now we have defined uh, the Agda type of contexts of types and of terms. 
But actually, you can do much more than that because it's well known that every um, pre-shift category is a model for type theory. And so what we can do as well is we can define an empty context in any for, for any uh, base category C. Uh, we can define context extension. So for any context gamma and any type T in uh, gamma, we can extend gamma with a variable of type T to get a new context. We can define a basic type like the type of natural numbers and uh, some terms of it like zero and successor. Um, we can define uh, simple product types and simple function types or non-dependent function types. Um, one remark here is uh, um, um, applies to this uh, lambda abstraction. So in order to construct a function from a type T to a type S, um, we need to give a body, which uh, should be a term in the context gamma extended with a variable of type T. Um, but this body should not have type S, but type S with some pi applied to it. Um, why is that? Well, that's because S is a type uh, in the context gamma, and it's not a type in the context gamma extended with a variable T. And so um, this means that we have to explicitly weaken this type S to get a type in the context gamma extended with T. And to do this, we have a, a, a type, an agda type of substitutions from delta to gamma for any two contexts, delta and gamma. And you can uh, intuitively think of such a substitution as um, providing uh, terms for any type in gamma uh, given, using the variables uh, in the context delta. And so um, given a substitution sigma from a context delta to a context gamma, we can um, transform a type T in gamma to a type in uh, context delta. And we also get an action on terms. So we can um, transform a term uh, in the context gamma of a certain type T uh, to a term in context delta of uh, the type T where we apply this substitution sigma. Furthermore, for any, two con for any context gamma and for any type T in gamma, we get a weakening substitution from gamma extended with T to uh, gamma. Uh, which we already saw in the previous slide. And we also get a term xi in the context gamma extended with a variable t of uh, w with a type the uh, weakening of t. So this xi actually lets us uh, use a variable, uh, the last variable that was added to our context uh, as a term. And so we see that variables in our framework are in, uh, in the brain form. Okay, so everything I've told uh, until now works for every base category. Um, it's 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 generic uh, in the base category. So now we can study. Um, we can look at a concrete example, namely the example of guarded recursion, and we can work with guarded recursion in our framework um, by instantiating our framework with um, the base category omega of natural numbers and the order structure. And so if we do that, we can easily implement the later modality on types, um, um, making precise uh, what we uh, explained some slides ago. And we can also provide um, uh, an introduction rule for this uh, later modality. What we can also do is to uh, provide a new induction principle called loop induction. So given a function from uh, later t to t for a certain type t, we can construct a term of this type t, and this will be a fixed point of this function in the sense that applying this function f to next of loop of f will be equal to uh, this term loop of f. Um, also, just as explained in the uh, some slides ago, we can define a type of uh, guarded streams of natural numbers um, denoted by stream here, and this will be a type in any context gamma, um, provided that the base category is here, this category omega. And then we also have operations on streams, a so head operation, tail, cons um, operation. Note here that the tail of a stream uh, is not a term of type stream, but a term of type later stream, expressing our intuition that the tail of a stream is not uh, immediately available, it's not available now, but it's available one time step from now. And the same applies to the cons construction on, uh, on streams. And what we can do now is uh, we can uh, use loop induction to construct 
uh, a stream of zeros. So we're going to uh, construct a term of type stream in, uh, in the empty context. We're going to use loop induction for that. So in order to do that, we need a function from later stream to stream. Such a function we can construct by using lambda abstraction. The domain type is later stream. And so we now need um, to provide uh, a term of type stream with uh, some variable of type later stream in our context. We need to pro uh, provide a term of type stream. So we're using uh, the cons uh, of streams. And the uh, head of this stream will be just zero. And then the tail of this stream, for this tail, we will use a co recursion. So we're going to use exactly this uh, variable of type later stream that we had in our context. And this um, matches the type of uh, cons for streams because here the tail should also be something of type later stream. So this is a, an easy definition of a stream of zeros in um, using using loop, loop induction. Um, but actually, um, in our framework, it's not yet that simple. Actually, we need to, um, two more proofs of type equalities. So this iota represents um, an operator that uh, takes a type equality and um, transforms uh, terms of one type into the other. And so the two um, type equalities that we need to prove is that the weakening of stream is equal to uh, stream and the, and the same for a later stream. And these are um, both quite uh, obvious intuitively because of course the type of streams does not depend on any variable in the context. And actually the, the proofs of these theorems are also not that, uh, not that interesting to give. And so what we did is we implemented uh, a solver um, for generating these uh, types of proofs. Um, also, one thing that uh, I need to note is that both of these uh, proofs actually follow from a naturality of the type of streams and of the um, later modality. And so we've uh, implemented a solver that generates proofs based on uh, naturality arguments. Um, it also uh, it already includes um, basic types like natural numbers, product types, and, and uh, function types, which are present in every pre-sheaf category. But uh, it's also very easy to extend with uh, types and operations that can only be implemented um, with uh, uh, in a particular when working with a particular um, base category, such as the type of streams and the uh, later modality. Okay, so let's now turn to uh, a quick demo of uh, our framework. Um, so I'm going to work out another example uh, in uh, uh, about streams in Agda. So as you can see, I've already prepared some uh, type equality proofs, so you should not pay attention to that at, uh, at the moment. What we're going to do is we're going to implement uh, the map operation on streams. So we're working again in this uh, base category omega. We're given a function f from natural numbers to natural numbers, and we need to construct a function from streams to streams. And we're going to do that using loop induction. So I'm going to use loop induction to produce a function from uh, streams to streams. Okay. And now we see that um, in order to do this, we need to give a uh, you see here that we need to give a function from later stream to stream to stream to stream. So we're producing that such a function using lambda abstraction. The type of the domain is later stream to stream. Okay. And what you see now is that we have uh, a function, uh, well, some a variable of type later stream to stream in our context, and we need to provide uh, a term of type the weakening of stream to stream. Um, so what we actually want to construct is uh, uh, the, a function from stream to stream, not uh, of the weakening of this type. But luckily, um, this weakening is exactly equal to the um, type, uh, the function type from stream to stream, and this can be proved using our uh, naturality solver. I've already prepared this, so we're going to use this proof. Um, okay, we're going to use this, and now you see that we need to uh, provide a term of type stream to stream. So again, this is a function, so we, we are going to use lambda abstraction. Now the domain is a type stream. And so now we see that in our context we have um, 
we have a variable of type later stream to stream and a variable of type stream and we need to construct some uh, term of type the weakening of stream. Now again we want to construct actually something of type stream not the weakening of stream and so we're going to uh, use the fact that the weakening of stream is actually equal to this type of streams. I've already prepared uh, as well this proof as well using the um, naturality solver so we're again using uh, this and now we see that we need to provide some uh, term of type stream with again these two variables in our context so we need to construct a stream we're using cons for uh, streams and then we need to uh, provide a pair of a natural number and a tail of type later stream so we're uh, producing a pair now, for the head of this stream, um, we need to uh, construct something of type nat with these two, same two variables in our context. What we're going to do is we're going to take this stream of our context, um, we're going to take the head of this and uh, apply our function f to it. So we're going to apply a certain function to um, the head of our stream. Now we're going to use this variable from our context. Um, recall that um, if we use this xi to use this variable, we're not getting some term of type stream, but of type the weakening of stream, but then we can uh, again use our uh, equality that the weakening of stream is equal to stream. So what we're getting here is we're taking the head of a certain stream, namely, um, we're going to use again this proof and then our variable here we need to provide a function from natural numbers to natural numbers that will be exactly our function f but we see this is a function in the empty context and this is a function in a context with two extra variables so we will need to weaken it as well but then we see that the type of this function will also be weakened it will be exactly this type and so we will uh, also need to prove that this type is equal to the type of um, functions from net to net it's also very easy just uh, a naturality proof which can be generated by our, sol our, by our, our solver so we're using this uh, proof gamma um, and then we're going to use our function f but we should weaken it twice and this should work now um, to construct our uh, tail we're going again to use uh, the tail of our stream in our context uh, and then co-recursively apply this map uh, operation for streams. So uh, in order to do that, I need a new operation. Uh, that's this operation. It's just expressing that um, the later operator is um, is uh, an applicative functor. And so now I'm using uh, again uh, the I'm will be using the tail of um, the stream in our context. So again, using this proof beta, Oop. okay. And now I need to provide a function of type later stream to stream, uh, but this will exactly be uh, this uh, function in our context, but we again need uh, some type equality. Now it's uh, this equality, which can also be generated by our uh, generator or by our solver. So now we use this proof called delta, on uh, the variable in our context and this should um, end our uh, definition of this map operator for streams. As you can see here it's actually um, also very annoying that you have to call the um, naturality solver multiple times so currently we're working on um, uh, using Agda's reflection machinery to avoid to avoid this, so that um, this um, uh, naturality solver will be called automatically. Okay. Also, we're working on uh, the construction of a certain uh, type D um, for the interpretation uh, of the untyped lambda calculus, and more generally um, for uh, on on solutions of more general recursive domain equations. What we plan to do in the future is to um, explore other non-dependent type theories apart from um, the theory with uh, guarded re recursion. We also plan to add uh, full dependent types. So um, to make that more clear, now a type can already depend on a variable in the context, 
but um, what we do not have is uh, dependent function types, dependent product types, and universes. The first ones are should not be that difficult to add, but universe types um, will probably be a, a, a bit more work. And then we also want to study uh, multimode type theory in our framework. That's everything I wanted to say. Uh, so thank you for uh, thank you for watching. If you're interested, you can uh, watch uh, you can look at the code on uh, GitHub and uh, get in touch with me. Thank you.